Hello and welcome to another Sunday afternoon photo editing live. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor and today we are going to be doing street photography. Um, for those of you that use Luminar Neo also, I do have my hands on the latest version, which is a beta version. Um, and I will be able to show you all of the funky new things. So if you're eager to see what those are all about, I can show you the twilight uh, and the water AI. Don't know if that'll come up in street photography today, but maybe twilight. So let me just see who's here. I already saw that Karen is here and she brought up a good point. Uh, we're going to be changing the time as we usually do. The time in the day will be changing to Wednesday. So we have two more weeks after this. So today and then two more um, at the Sunday time. And then we're going to be taking a short hiatus because Rob and I are going on a cruise to Alaska. So we'll be on vacation and then we'll be returning on Wednesdays after that. So our last broadcast on Sunday will be April the 28th, and then we'll be returning on May 22nd, and that will be at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So for those of you that are in um, Europe, it might be a little bit late for you, um, and, but we're going to pick up more people down under, so it'll be more time for them. Marguerite from Ontario, Bill in Dallas. Hey, Bill, I've got some of your images that you submitted. Thank you so much. Uh, greetings from New England. I think she's in England, though, Joe. <laughs> Just Joe. I like that. I like that name. Just Joe. Chichester. I'm uh, Chichester. Uh -huh. I don't know how to say that one, Simon, but welcome. I'm guessing that's also in the UK. Stephanie in Oregon, Wilmette Valley, which is great. Hey, Todd. Good to see you. Catherine in Ireland. Bucks County. Where is Bucks County, Shelley? I don't know. What country is that in? Um, David from Ottawa. Mike from Milton, I think, is that Ontario as well, Mike? Nigel is in the Barbados, Daniel in California. <laughs> Nigel's in the house, Rob says. Um, I know you're doing a cruise as well, Todd, so um, we'll be sharing notes afterwards, but I guess I'll see you uh, before you go, right? And Holly's in the house, yay, Holly's in the house. Okay, so, uh, Sheila Ferguson. Hey, we haven't seen you in a while, Sheila. Good to see you. Lots of great people that we haven't seen in a while. Awesome. All right. So, uh, <laughs> Jen. <laughs> hey, Jen. We are just talking to her literally because she's our neighbor across the street and her cat is in our yard all the time and he is perfectly welcome as is she. So, um, let's get started. Let me pop over to Lightroom. Um, I know I said I've got some things for you in, in Luminar, but I want to start in Lightroom um, because I've got more people that are using Lightroom on their street photography images. And let me just flag a few of these ones here. Um, maybe I can show you one real quick here. Um, let's do this one. Is this Mike's? This one was sent in a while ago. Um, I just need to get my stuff organized here. This is Dale's image, actually. Um, so Dale does a, a weekly, like a coffee break or live for Luminar users as well. But let's see what we could do with this one. Um, and, and he's he's taken the the term street photography very literally here. So Dale, if you're here, um, good job on the humor aspect of that for sure. Uh, Sue, I've got some of your images as well. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to take this one into Luminar because that is what Dale is using. And it is a raw file. So you can see that shows up here. It is a raw file. And one of the new changes or slight additions to the program is that now we have this little bar at the bottom. So previously we had this these tools that were in the middle. 
So the eyeball and the before and after and the zoom tool, as well as this action panel, we're in the middle. Now we see the file name. So that's a huge benefit, I think. That's a good improvement. And you can also flag or reject your images from here. And the before and after and the eyeball and the zoom stuff are still over here. Okay, so I'm gonna go into develop raw and see if there's a camera profile that maybe gives us a little bit more punch here. I think, let's go with landscape. So landscape tends to enhance the blues and the greens in the image, okay? And I'm also looking at the histogram. Make sure that the histogram is visible. If you don't see it, you can turn it on here, okay? And I want to work with the histogram and the curves because I want to get a little bit more contrast in here. So what the histogram is telling me is that it's kind of squished in and I want to expand it because there's no contrast. This means there's nothing white, it's nothing touching the edge and nothing black. And when I go to the curves tool, you'll notice that the histogram is here as well. Uh, Rob, if you could please share the link to the curves video that I did recently that will give more information on how to use curves. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start tucking this in. And I've turned on my clipping warning. So as the white start to go off the chart over there, um, we start to get this red clipping warning. And then I'm going to do the same and we'll start to see the blacks clip. Now, if I go to extreme, okay, you can see the blue here. I'm not gonna go quite that far, but you'll notice that as I increase the blacks, I say this every time I'm editing, watch what happens to the color, okay? So I'm gonna dial this back again. See how it's kind of flat and dull and the color is, is not so punchy? Watch what happens when I add black, okay? Look at the yellow and the blue now, okay? So you don't need to touch the saturation slider to get more color. <laughs> I've got a cat messing around in my office now. You just need to add more black, okay? So right away, we've got some really nice color and contrast happening now. We can adjust the color, oops. We can adjust the color further by warming it up a little bit. Feels a little bit blue. Or we could use the eyedropper and see if we can make the road neutral. Let's try that. Okay, so that feels a little too blue to me. I don't think the road is perfectly neutral. I'm probably gonna go somewhere in there, because asphalt usually has a bit more warmth to it, right? So that looks pretty good. And I usually do things like check for chromatic aberration, which is down here under optics, and just check this box. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but that cat is messing around in my office. <laughs> She's running in and out, okay? All right, so that looks pretty good. And we've got no clippings. We've got some nice contrast. Oh, a little bit of clipping in the clouds, my, my mistake. So I'll bring that back down. And just to keep the highlights in control. And if I have the tiny little bit clipping, I'm not too concerned about it. Mostly, I just wanted to enhance the contrast to bring out more color, okay? So I'm going to jump right down to this um, Twilight tool, this new one. So you'll notice that there's a new section. Uh, Rob, if you could also share a link to the video that we just posted yesterday about the update 1.19. So in the latest version of Luminar, and you do not have access to it yet. Um, so if you go to look for updates, you won't see it yet. It's available or it will be available on the 25th. So you have to wait another 11 days, unfortunately. Um, but we've partners and um, ambassadors like myself were given an early copy so that we could make our videos and do our tutorials, okay? So one of the new things as well is that there is now a landscape section and the landscape tool that used to be up here, right above vignette, is now down here, as well as they've put the sky AI, sun rays and atmosphere there with the two new tools. So Twilight Enhancer as well as here and the Water Enhancer. So let's go try the Twilight Enhancer. Okay, so if we wanna turn this image into um, something that looks like more blue hour or nighttime, they've given us a bunch of presets to start with, but you can fully adjust it to your own taste. So let's try blues. So let's say we just wanna make it blue hour. 
And all of these presets, all they do is they set these sliders to a predetermined amount, and then we can adjust the other stuff up below here as well, all of these other options, okay? It's a blue hour, maybe not so much in this one. Let's try a different color. Ooh, emerald's kind of dramatic, okay? Uh, let's try golden, also dramatic. Blush, eh, not, not, I'm not feeling the pink. No, I'm not feeling the pink. I kind of like either the golden because it's mirroring the color in the road or the emerald, which was kind of a neat um, color as well. Let's go with the golden because it's really uh, bringing out the road color and then we can adjust everything else. So it's brought the exposure way down, right, to darken the scene so we can adjust that. Again, this was just the preset and everything is totally adjustable, okay? I can check for clippings. We can adjust the color temperature, okay? So if it's too warm, I can dial it back a little bit or I could give it a little bit more red. And then we have this new section here that is called Dawn. And this one is basically um, a section in the middle. See where it's adding that yellow? I'm gonna make it smaller, okay? and I'll just increase the exposure. So see what it's doing? It's giving sort of a golden glow in the middle of the image, right? The other thing I wanna do is set the mask because right now I'm not sure that it's picking up the horizon correctly, partly because the horizon is crooked, right? So I wish there was a tilt here, but we're gonna have to try and set it so that it's as close to this part of the sky, right? So it's overlapping over here, right? But I can't tilt it. So I'm just going to bring this down a little bit and we'll do fixed gaps. I mean, there's no water, but there's a water reflection tool here if you have water. And then the scene is like the scene relighting in the sky AI, okay? So we can adjust how much of this color we want to apply um, to the sky. Oh, now I can see it's some weird stuff going on with the mask there. Let's just change that a little bit. Oh, there we go. See how that's affecting more of the sky? I'm going to fix that. There we go. It was picking up not correctly here in this area. Okay, so now we can come back to scene and decide how dark we want to make this part of the scene, whether there's humans, how much saturation we're adding, and so on. Okay. So there is the twilight before and after. I think it's a really good addition here. So you can even do a sky replacement and then apply the twilight enhancer after it to the new sky. I haven't tried that yet, but I don't see why you can't. Sheila said she watched the new video. Awesome, thank you, Sheila. Manfred is here. Oh, you're gonna be in Alaska just before us, Holly. We leave on May 5th. So we should touch base because maybe you're gonna be, oh no, you're. we already talked about this. You're going from Seattle and we're going from Vancouver. Bummer. Too bad we don't connect. That would be cool if we had the same uh, stops. Mickey is in the house. All right. So there is a quick edit in Luminar. Oops. Let me get back over here. I meant to do before and after. Okay. There's a quick before and after. So that's not a typical street photo. <laughs> Let's go look at something that's a little bit more typical of when I say street photography, what uh, what are we actually talking about, okay? Uh, before I get into these a little bit further, um, yeah, someone is going to stay at our house with our cats, so you can't come to stalk us at our house <laughs> for, the, for anybody watching, yes. Um, thanks for thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel. Rob is reminding us. So what I want to talk about in terms of street photography is what, what do we capture on the street? What is interesting, right? And I just kind of want to flip through some of these because um, there's various different styles and 
options for street photography. For me, it's about capturing people and the essence of what is occurring on the street, right? But of course, then there's also the architectural element and the ever favorite um, cats and bicycles. Cats and bicycles and windows and doors, right? Photographers love those kinds of things. This one is a really cool image um, submitted by Anne Treen. And this one is neat because for me, there's sort of this older building reflected in this more modern building. And then we, you know, we've got the bicycle and then the person sitting sort of in the corner on their phone. And it's got a really nice balance to this image. So I am going to edit this one. I'm going to come back to this one. Okay, another image by Anne Train. Um, this is the original. So street photography, again, for me, um, is about people. For me, anyways, is about people. And this is obviously from India, which I know she spent a lot of time at. Um, and the kids and the people in India are amazing to photograph. They just, they love their picture taken. So if you're nervous about photographing people, um, if you could please find some articles for on street photography, Rob, and share those. Um, just some tips for how to overcome it. Okay, if you're nervous photographing people, try and go to a place or like a parade or a festival where people are expecting to be photographed or even a country like India, right? People love their picture taken there. Cuba is another one which is great for street photography, very famous, right? Okay. Then there's the architectural element. Um, for me, this feels a little bit empty okay, because I'm looking for people. I want to have that human element about street photography generally is about a story. What is the story that we're seeing? Okay. So look for stories when you're, when you're on the street. This one submitted by Leslie is kind of neat because it's, it's a reflection. You see the reflection in the window um, of whatever, you know, is behind her. But then there's this harp that's sort of framing this statuesque bust, bust in the background. So there's a lot going on here, but it's kind of a neat image and definitely another element of street photography, which is windows and, and, and reflections, right? Again, another sort of empty building. I know I see a lot of street photos like this and I'm looking for the story, right? What is the story here? Is it after hours? Uh, maybe, you know, we could apply the twilight tool on this one to make it look more like it's dusk or darker. And obviously the, the doors and the windows are all closed up. So it's, it's either early morning or after hours and closed, but I'm looking for, the story element. Okay. So keep that in mind when you're photographing street photography. And here's a great example. So I'm actually going to edit this one next because Bill is here and he said, this one was taken outside the city hall in Paris, which is another amazing uh, place for street photography. And he wanted to know how I would recommend editing this to make the most of this fun moment. Uh, I agree. It is a totally fun moment. Okay. So let's do this, that. So he uses Lightroom. So we're going to take this one into Lightroom. Okay. And we get over here. There we go. Okay. So we can see Bill's camera settings here, right? Um, what camera are you using, Bill? I'm not familiar with this one. It's a DNG. Oh, a Leica. Okay, cool. So it's a Leica. And we can see his camera settings here. We're ISO 100, so low ISO, F4, so a larger aperture, and 160th. So good settings, okay? If you wanted to capture um, her a little bit more frozen, a, long, a faster shutter speed would have been ideal because what's happened here is she's not sharp for two reasons, okay? So she's not sharp because the focus is somewhere over here. So if you're not sure where the focus is, look around. I can see the ground is blurry, 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 blurry. And then it starts to come in focus around here. Okay. So focus is somewhere in the middle of this scene. So you have to be really careful where your focus goes. Um, tell me what, um, Tell me what focus mode you are using here, Bill, because if you're using, let me just see, metering mode was pattern, okay? I don't know if it tells me in the metadata here, focus mode. 
No. Let's just see. Do you remember what you used? What do you usually use? So what I'm asking is, in your camera, or in most cameras, there's an option for setting um, a single point focus, meaning where you put the dot is where the camera will focus. Multi, multi dot, right? Where the camera will choose or entire scene and the camera will choose the entire scene. Okay. So Bill is saying spot. Okay. So that means you had a single spot where you chose to focus. So when you're doing that on a moving subject, it's actually really tricky to nail it because they're moving. Okay. Unless she wasn't moving real fast. Um, Rob, I'm going to have you busy again. There's lots of tips today on getting sharper images. Um, if you could please share that article on getting sharper images with for, for Bill and for others on doing street photography. So there's oftentimes people will say for street photography, set it to F8 and then just, just shoot, you know. And sometimes that works. But when you have a moving subject that you want to get sharp, you might want to set it to more of a zone focus to get the spot on her. Okay. So I'm not going to worry about the fact that she's not super sharp. Let's try and bring her out a little bit more. Okay. So it's a raw file. So we should have, oh no, we do not. We do not have camera. We just have Adobe's. Interesting. Okay. So it's not giving me the camera raw files, but we can choose a different Adobe one. I'm going to just stick with standard. Let's try portrait. Landscape gives us a bit more punch. Okay. And then I'm going to do the shift double click trick. I think we're going to end up with some whites going down. No, no. Okay. So shift, um, holding shift down while I click on the words. And now I'm holding the Alt Option button to get these clipping warnings. Sorry, I'm stuffed up today, apparently. So I take it up higher on the white side. So I see the clipping and then just bring it back down until I don't. And we can adjust the sky separately, right? As well as the person. So these are the basic edits that I want to do. Keep them minimal, right? Maybe warm it up a little bit. And then I want to do some masking. So the first thing I want to do is darken the sky. So I'm going to do select sky and bring the exposure down. But if we want to keep the contrast in the sky, what I usually do is also bring up the whites and bring down the blacks. Okay, so I'm darkening the sky, but still keeping the contrast. Okay. If I want to give it a little more drama, we could add either clarity or dehaze. Actually, dehaze does a good job. Look at that. We could end up with stormy sky. That's actually quite good. Okay. And if I want to give it a bit more of a sort of a stormy feel, I can just add a bit of green. You know how that sky is sort of green before it rains? That looks pretty good. Now let's just name it sky. And then let's do another one and see if it selects her as the subject. It did. Okay, perfect. Okay, so it's gotten most of her, but it's missed. Oh, no, it got her hat. Okay, so that's good. So it's gotten most of her. Looks like it missed the ribbons, but that's okay. I'm not too worried about that. But mostly what I want to do is brighten her up a little bit. Again, same thing. I'm going to use plus exposure, but I'm also going to brighten the whites and keep the blacks darker. So when, when I'm darkening or brightening, I'm not just using exposure because that's mid-tones. I'm, I'm adding contrast as well. So the top of her hat is clipping a little bit, but I'm really not concerned about it. My biggest issue is I want to get her standing out a bit more because she's so dark, okay? So I'm just gonna call that girl. Okay, so now this is our before and after. Okay. I might want to do a little bit of cropping on this one or vignetting because this thing on the side bothers me here. I wish they didn't have that on the edge. But let's just do an edge vignette. That helps. Okay, so I've just darkened a tiny little bit around the edges. And... I might brighten the whole image a little bit now as well. 
like so. Right? The other way we can darken the sky and potentially these things back here is in the color mixer. Right? Um, if you are in our Lightroom course, if you are a student of our Lightroom course, okay, uh, we have just added a new lesson about version 13. So I apologize for taking so long on that one. But um, <laughs> Rob says he wasn't yelling. Go to the uh, course and you'll see lesson 48 now with a new update for uh, version 13 in Lightroom. And that's where I explain this new tool, the point color tool. Right. So if you're used to HSL and you can't find it, it's under color mixer now and it's called mixer. So they've changed the name of it but it's still there and it still looks and works exactly the same. Okay, so we could take the blues or use the targeted tool, right? And darken all the blues and you can see that that makes more drama in the sky, right? It also minimizes these signs a little bit in the background. I'm gonna bring this one down a bit too. At the same time, we could brighten the reds, right, to bring her jack it up a little more orange is usually skin tone but see it's also brightening the concrete so i don't want to necessarily do that we'll come back to her we'll come back to that one in a moment okay um because let's switch over here let's see what happens if i do yellow okay so yellow darkens her shoes and the building and the stuff in the background so i might take it down a little bit I don't care if her shoes are darker, that's fine. But I wanna brighten her face, okay? So I could use a mask to do that. Or let's see what happens if we try point color, okay? Oop, let me get in here. So with this one, you need to select the eyedropper and then click on the color that you want to affect, okay? At the bottom of this tool, there's a little option that says visualize range. And now we could see which parts of the image my selection is going to affect is going to get the balloons and the sidewalk. So I don't want that. I want mid colors. Okay. So I'm going to remove this in so that it's more mid tones, okay. Less dark and less bright. Let's make this, I don't know why this thing doesn't want to adjust. It's the weirdest little thing. I'm trying to make it smaller. There we go. So I just want her face. It's still getting her jacket, still getting the sidewalk a little bit. Um, let's just move this over. There we go. Okay, so by limiting the saturation range, there's less saturation in the sidewalk. Can you see that? Now I've limited to only affecting the more saturated tones and it's getting mostly her jacket and her face. And if we go this way, we get less of the balloons, which is also more what I wanted. Okay, so we're narrowing it down to mostly her face and her hands now. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see that, okay? Less balloons, and we missed the sidewalk completely. Okay, so all that's doing is setting up for, so I know where my effects are going to apply. Now I could turn the visualize range off, and just adjust okay so see now when i do luminance it's just affecting her face so i can do luminance a little bit less saturation okay and i'm brightening just her face see that so this is what this tool is doing okay i can add a second point color if i want and i say okay i want this light blue here Look how specific you can get. Okay. Once again, let's do visualize range. And I wanna try and get it off the sky. So again, I'm gonna go with lighter colors, less saturated. Getting closer. Okay, so see how that's happening, but I'm still getting the sky. So it's not working the way I wanted. I wanted it not in the sky. So I'm just gonna undo this one and I'll show you how to do it with a mask. Okay, so if we add a mask, that should bring me back to color. 
<laughs> Where's my color? Oh, I got to turn this one off. There we go. That's interesting. Okay, so if I go in to add a mask, uh, I'm going to, I'm just going to do select with a, a linear gradient. because I want only the stuff in the buildings here, these blues, like that, okay? And within this mask, so now this area that's been selected, within this area, I can select the point color, okay? So now I can do that again. Click on that blue, okay? And I can visualize, okay? And now I've got the colors that I want. Narrow down just to that light color. We still have the sky though, right? Not a problem. We can just subtract from this mask and select sky. And right away the sky will be minimized. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be unselected, you'll see. Okay, so I'm just going to turn off visualize range. See now where it's darkening? It's only affecting the signs. Looks like it's getting a little bit of the sky there, but that's not so bad. Okay, if I want to add a second one, and let's say I want to get those pinks because I want to get that pink color toned down as well. There we go. And let's do the orange. Maybe let's shift it more red. Actually, that looks pretty good right there. So we've minimized all of those colors in the building sign. See that? So that's kind of something what I would do with this one. We've really limited the colors so that that red pops. We brought her out using the mask, okay? We could also use the lens blur tool, which I'm not a super fan of because this is again something that was added in version 13, but it tends to it tends to work really slow and it pulls to it pulls from the sky it pulls from the cloud okay so it takes a little bit more time to use sorry 18.2 what did i miss here uh simon says 18.2 what did i miss simon okay i'm going back here Um, what did I miss? Try using luminosity, luminance masking in 18.2, 1.8.2. Oh, 1.18. Uh, it's 1.19. You won't have luminosity masking until 1.19. Okay. So this is the lens blur. Um, and it works pretty well, but you know, it's doing a weird thing there. It's not doing such a great job on the sky. Maybe if I just minimize it a little bit. Let's dial it down. I could also make the depth of field shallower. And you could do the same thing in Luminar with the portrait bokeh. That actually looks pretty good. Okay, so there's our before and after okay now if we wanted to sharpen her up um lightroom lightroom does not um have the greatest sharpening tools so you would need to take it over either to topaz or honestly to luminar because um let's let's compare actually uh i'm going to make a, co a virtual copy of this one and let's compare I'm going to turn off the lens blur and go to Luminar and use the Portrait Bokeh um, AI and see what the difference is. So let's take this blur off. And let's take this one. I'm going to go straight to Luminar. Okay, so normally I would recommend going to Photoshop. No, I changed my mind. 
I am going to go to Photoshop. Okay, so to use Photoshop in a purely non-destructive workflow from Lightroom to Luminar and back again, I use Photoshop in the middle. Okay, and the reason I do that and take it over as a smart object is that you would then apply Luminar as a filter or a smart filter. And anything else you apply, you can apply Photoshop filters in there. I could go and take it to Topaz if I want to try the sharpening in Topaz. If I'm not happy with what is coming from Luminar, it just gives you more options of truly non-destructive editing because I can always get back to Luminar and the same edits that I can, I can tweak them, okay? If you go directly from Lightroom to Luminar and back again, your edits that you did in Luminar are baked in, okay? They're baked in and you can't change them later. Okay, I, do, I don't want to crop. All right, let's get over here. And we need my layers, okay? I work on two monitors, so you'll see me bringing my tools over as I need them, okay? So here we have the image, and you can see it's a smart filter based on this little icon here, okay? So I could try the sharpening in Photoshop, and honestly, it's it's not that great either. Usually I would use Unsharp Mask or Smart Sharpen, okay? So it gives us a preview. Where's the girl? Let's find her. Gives us a preview. Yeah, and you can see really it's, it's for me, it's not really doing that much, right? So I am going, it keeps wanting to give me a cropping, which I don't want. So I'm going to go from here to Luminar, okay? And you find that under Filters, Skylum, Luminar Neo, okay? You'll notice that I have all my older versions there as well. Yes, I can try the luminosity masking once I get here, but I want to see about the sharpening first. So let's try the sharpening. The one thing in, um, you'll also notice a style change in Luminar. Um, the logo is now a star as opposed to the triangle that we're used to, okay? And the buttons and some of the things like favorites, for example, if I add my favorite back in here, um, favorites used to be purple and now they're white, okay? I'm not sure why they get rid of the purple, but purple is now down here under the professional tools. So we could try Super Sharp AI. Um, honestly, I'm not a huge fan of this tool. Um, I don't think it's motion blur. So let's try medium sharpen AI and see if it does uh, anything good. If it does, we can then use the object masking, which is another new um, feature of Luminar 1.19 right? Then we have object masking and I can select just her or, and her and the balloons if it does a good job, right? Because I just want to sharpen her, not the entire image. Now we wait for it. See, this is why I don't like this tool so much. <laughs> so. And we wait. Any questions? T5H, T54H, tried to donate. Well, try it again. We appreciate your donations. And thank you, Marguerite, for yours last week. That was very nice of you to send a thank you. Yeah, see, it's like taking forever. Oh, uh, notice that we have a new status bar at the bottom here as well. So where the file name is that I mentioned earlier, it now says applying super sharp. So when we were previously not sure if it was still in the process of doing something, um, now we have a status bar. Okay, I'm just going to cancel out of that. See, it's still trying to apply it. Let's just close this guy because... I'm not a fan of this tool and I'm going to go use the one that I like better, which is actually details. So this is a trick that I discovered is that if you bring the small details up, yeah, it's still trying to apply that super sharp. Let's see what happens. Now I got the spinny wheel. Can you guys see the rainbow spinny wheel? Ugh. 
There we go. Oh, what is that done? Still applying super sharp. No edits. You know what? I'm just going to cancel. Uh, yes, I'm going to cancel and come back to Photoshop and just open it again because the super sharp one, um, I'm just not a fan of that tool. I rarely, rarely, rarely use it. So let's just start this process again. It's like, it's like the one that I just did in Lightroom. Um, just takes a really long time. All right, here we go again. Let's try that again. So edit. And details. Okay, so this is the trick that I use. Okay, so when you use small details, it does tend to give it a bit more grain. And I don't know if there's enough detail here at all to pick anything up. But see how her coat, it does look sharper. Let's try medium as well. We're definitely picking up some noise. Okay, so we'll have to do some denoise as well. But see, it does look sharper. Okay, so let's do that. And then let's try noiseless AI. Oh, I was going to mask it. Right. Okay, so let's do the masking. And I'll show you the new object masking. So I'm going to go to object select. And it does a quick scan of your image, like most of the AI tools. Okay, so it's looking for different objects. Right. Now, it looks like nothing is selected. But when you hover over things, you can select that thing. Okay, so I can pick her jacket her face, her hat, her legs. So as I hover over each thing, it selects it, see? So I literally just have to click to add it. And if I want to add the balloons, I can do that as well. So now I've basically selected all of her, okay? So this is only applying to her. And of course I can copy the mask. So then we want to do noiseless. I'll do a middle noiseless on her. Ah, Todd has an interesting point. The next M4 chips from Mac are supposed to help offload AI from the internet to the computer. Interesting. Do you know when the, those are being released, Todd? Because I'm literally thinking about buying a new iMac and the ones they have right now are, are M3. So if they're coming out with an M4, I might wait. So do you have any uh, timeline on that? Okay. Oof. Noiseless is not doing a good job on that. That is doing something very strange. Not happy with that. I wonder if Sharpen did that. I'm going to mask it into her. Let's come back here. Yeah, why is Noiseless... You see that? See, why is Noiseless doing this odd, odd thing? It was making it look really strange. Let's see if it does it again. Yeah, that's really bizarre, hey? Look at it. Okay, so that's not working. Let's just do his regular denoise. It's taken a moment for these uh, things to apply, partly because my computer, as I say every week, um, partly because my computer is running the live stream, right? I'm just going to do a little bit of luminosity, denoise. I'm just going to mask it in, paste it into her. Yeah, I'm not sure what's happening there. That's very strange. There we go. There we go. That's better. So 
see it is sharpening it a very tiny bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply it and it will bring it back to Photoshop, okay? <laughs> so Todd says, supposedly by the end of the year, and then David says, the operative word there is, it could. <laughs> so, uh, yes, so, okay, fall. All right, well, maybe I'm gonna hang off then. Yes, we are investing in new hardware so I can edit videos faster and stream faster. Yeah, it's still giving me that weird sort of crunchy look. So I'm not crazy about what that's doing. So instead, I just turned the Luminar Neo plugin off on there. Do you see that? So it's literally, I can just turn it off like a filter. Okay. Oh, no, it's taking me back again to Luminar Neo, automatic mode. Come on, Photoshop. I don't want to spend too much time messing around with this today, but I just want to try running it through Topaz real quickly if it will let me. Rendering smart filters. Come on, Photoshop. Okay. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into filter and let's see if um, I'm not even sure if my Sharpen AI is up to date, to be honest, or my license is up to date, but we're about to find out and um, see if it does any better job. Okay. So sometimes you need to use more than one tool. Um, <laughs> ah, trial mode. Yes, I own this software. All right. I'm not having much luck with plugins today. No, my Photoshop has crashed as well. So I'm just going to get out of here because I've literally done nothing in Photoshop today and not had success there. But sometimes you need to use more than one tool to get the results that you're looking for. If you have some of these other tools, Bill, give that a try to see if you can sharpen her up a little bit. Okay, let's continue with our street photography. That's a great image though, Bill. That's a really cool image for sure. Let's see what else we've got in here for street photography that I had. Oh yes, okay, so we've got a couple from Mike. And these ones also he wants to do in Luminar. So we'll take a look at these. And I'm going to say that this is the same challenge that Bill had, um, you have as well, Mike. There's nothing the sharpness is is a little bit off here as well so when you are focusing right the focus is back here okay can you see that the dirt and the gravel behind this person walking is what's sharp so your focus is there so you have to be really careful of where you place your focus dot um and you're using a pentax okay so you have to make sure you put it on the person or if you're using if you're doing the um settings on your camera use the continuous focus to track moving subjects okay whoops where did that go okay so same thing here as well okay the person is not quite sharp and i'm not sure where the focus is here and I know that snow, um, snow and rain like this will confuse your autofocus. So it can be really tricky when you're photographing in a scene like that. Okay. Well, let's take a look at <coughs> this one here um, from Brandon because this one is really cool. So this is in in Calgary, and I believe it's a it's it's a really interesting sculpture that they've placed there, and it is a. I believe Sony file. So let's just take a look at the options for camera profile. Okay. Vivid. In this case, I don't normally choose vivid, but I might because it works really well. The other option is we could go black and white on this one. But let's just do the shift double click and see where we get to. I'm gonna go the opposite way. I'm also going to straighten it because I want to make sure that it's it's straight vertically and I feel like the head is tipping a little bit. So I'm going to try auto and see if it fixes it. Yeah, it did. Right? By doing that little tilt, we also get rid of this guy in the corner. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but 
this guy here, there's a guy in an orange vest in this, this corner. Okay, so by doing that little tilt, I can just crop him out. Okay, there's our crop. And we've got nice contrast. So this is a great one to increase clarity. Okay. But I want to keep it minimal on the whole image. So again, this is global. Keep your global edits lower. I'm going to apply a preset to darken the edges. And all that does is changes the sliders here in the effects panel to add a vignette. Okay. Let's brighten it back up again. So sometimes I apply the vignette and then I come back to exposure to brighten it overall. Okay. And then let's do subject select and see if it picks that face. Pretty close, right? I could try subtract and just brush it off the windows. Let's choose auto mask. There we go. Increase my density a little bit. So we're just taking it off that background like that. And I want to give the subject more texture and clarity. So this is the part that I want to punch up. Look at that. Look at how the face really comes out when I do that. You can see the eye sockets. Yeah, that works great. I can also turn on the clipping warnings and add some more white and black. So we're enhancing that contrast even more. Let me see what it's doing. So I'm just going to call this the face. Looks a little bit dark now, so I'm just going to give it a tiny bit more exposure. That looks pretty good. And now I could use the lens blur tool, or since I have the face selected so nicely here, just use another mask by duplicate and invert. And now we have the background selected. So now I could darken it even more, bring the highlights down. Look at how that brings that face out. Okay. And a subtle shift of minus texture. Okay, so I don't like to go minus clarity because that just looks like a blob kind of. And because the head or this sculpture thing is sitting on this pedestal, I don't want to blur that because it would be sharp as well. But definitely some minus texture helps to bring the focus more towards this head. Okay. Like so. So let's see it before and after, okay? So see how that is bringing out the texture and the contrast in the subject, in this case, the white face sculpture thingy, and minimizing the texture and the brightness of the background, as well as the sharpness a little bit, okay? Really makes that face pop, okay? If we wanna go a little more abstract, I'm thinking I wanna crop in even a little more, and just come into the base of it like so. I still think it's crooked. I can't tell. Let's just come in a little bit more. I could try to straighten as well another way. Let me do a reset here. And I'm just going to keep the aspect ratio and come to the bottom of the head like that. We could go down to the transform tools and use guided. Okay. So what I'm going to do is let's just say I want these perfectly vertical. And I don't think they are perfectly vertical. I think if we, if I set these, yeah, I don't think it is vertical. So that looks like it's stretching it a little bit. And I don't think that's correct. So I'm going to undo that and just do it visually. Yeah, somewhere in there. Just get rid of that guy. And then come up to the bottom. 
So then it's just a little bit more abstract because we don't see the bottom. Uh, Todd says, because I tried black and white. Yes, that was another of my initial thoughts as well. So let's go black and white on this one. Also change in version 13. Okay, so black and white. Yeah, I think it works well in that in this case as well. Okay, and when I'm doing black and white, I tend to like to punch the contrast even more, right? And I could do that with uh, curves or I can just do that here. I can also go back to the mask. I should rename this one background and bring the highlights down even more on the background. There we go. And yes, it does pop nicely in black and white as well. Cool subject, right? I think the blue works too because the uh, warm colors uh, project and cool colors recede in your picture, right? So the blue kind of goes into the background. I'm not sure what the addition of green does to enhance. Oh, um, so Marguerite's question was about the other one where I added green into the sky. If you ever notice, like before it storms, the sky looks kind of green. Um, that's all. It's just that a normal phenomenon of, of, I don't know, I think the sky looks, looks more evil and scary looking with a little bit of green as opposed to blue. Okay. All right. So let's continue. One other thing I want to talk about um, in terms of street photography, and I mentioned this already, is finding a story. Um, I think there's definitely a story. Something is happening here, right? Definitely a story here. And the, the photographer, in this case, Mike, is seeing this interesting sign, right? And then waiting for a human to walk by. So there's an element of humor here, and that's part of this story. Definitely a story here. Uh, looks like some sort of awards or something. Um, the title, okay. uh, the Fellas Valmar. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> it's something about, looks like some kind of movie awards maybe. Okay. Karen's image. This was one you sent in a while ago, Karen, for shadows, but I put it in the street category because I think it was more fitting for street category. So what she saw here was overhead and it was more the, the patterns, right? So the story here is the patterns on the sidewalk with the, the, the little, um, what do you call those? Flags and then the shadows of the flags, right? Apparently I can't find my words today. What's the story here, okay? So this one's called the Sugar Shack, which I'm guessing is like candy. And then there's a little girl in the doorway. So I see the elements of a story. I don't know if it's strong enough, Karen, to pick up the story. Is that if that's what you were intending there? What's the story? Okay, so ask yourself that when you're doing street photography. What is the story? What is the story that I see here when I'm taking this picture? What is the story I want viewers to get when they see this picture? Okay. So this one looks like um, a little street side cafe called the Garage, Garage Bakehouse. Okay, so I'd love to see a, a bun or some bakery on the, on the bakery goods on the table, right, to go with that story or some people eating some baked goods, right? It needs a little more. It needs a human element. Okay, this one of Sue's. Okay, so I'm guessing like this car went by here. Maybe there's a little bit slower shutter speed. Yeah, sixth of a second. Okay, so did you use a tripod on this one, Sue? Um, because it looks like it's fairly sharp. The image is a little on the small side, so it looks like it's a JPEG that's been exported or cropped. So when you're sending me your files, send me your originals, please, because this one looks like it's already edited and somewhat cropped. Okay, so remember to send your originals. But there's definitely a story here. You know, obviously we're talking more Christmas time. And I love the fact that it's captured red and green here, which adds to that whole sort of Christmassy effect, right? 
I mean, Sheila asked about this one and she said that the lights on the fire truck were a little bright and how to control that. Okay, so um, Sheila, you're using on one, is that correct? Yeah, I'm looking at you. So you're using on one, which I don't have. Um, so I'm going to use Lightroom because the tools in most photo editors are the same kinds of sliders. Like you should have all of these same kinds of tools, you know, that I see here. Okay. So to fix that problem, it's exactly the same as what I did on the, the girl in front of the city hall with the balloon. Okay. So first thing I want to do also is correct the tilt because I feel like the building is crooked. So let's just use auto and see how that does. That's pretty good. Okay. Next, the fire truck is sort of right in the middle and there's there's a person with a white jacket over on this side. So I'm going to actually crop in a little tighter to get rid of that person. And I might get rid of some of this reflection, although I do like the lights reflecting on the on the bottom here. So if I'm going to come in a little more, okay, I don't want to get rid of the second fire engine, but let's come in a little bit more and get rid of some of the uh, top part or the sky, okay? I still feel like it's crooked. I'm looking at the verticals in the building. There we go, Okay. Right? Now to solve the problem of the bright things, okay? So if I do shift double click, it's gonna take white this direction, but I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna go on the blacks and then use my Alt key. So this is Alt option. You may have that option in on one, I'm not sure. I'm just holding the option key and it shows me where the clippings are. <coughs> if you don't have that, okay, um, see if you can turn it on with the histogram. And all I'm doing is bringing the highlights down, but see how it's affecting the lights and the sky. So that's a good thing, okay? You could also use that tool we did a minute ago, which is the color mixer. Okay, and use luminance and then just select in here. Now, if it's too super bright, you might not get the colors or you might get the wrong color. See, I've got the wrong color here. I'm getting magenta. We could just try orange. Okay, so it's getting the outside of the orange and that one's getting the fire truck. So the luminance is not gonna get the brightest part of the image and that's why I used the highlights here. Okay, so highlights down like so. And then the whole thing for me, the color is a little bit off. It feels very pink. Okay, so I'm going to minus some pink and plus some yellow. And then there's what I call the dance. Okay, so the editing dance is then bring the exposure down a little bit as well. Okay, so there's the before and after we haven't changed it that much okay and the lights being super bright and the reason that you get them sort of blurry like that is because again the focus is an issue okay so i'm looking here and there's nothing that's really super sharp so this one is a motion problem right because of the exposure so an eighth of a second Really, you need to be using a uh, tripod for that type of exposure, right? Ha use a higher ISO if you can. Okay? So this one, she's using a Coolpix. If you have um, a higher ISO on this camera, Sheila, definitely increase the ISO because your shutter speed, the slow shutter speed is what's caused the problem, right? And that Sharper, um, Sharper Images article that Rob shared earlier is the one that you want to look at as well. That one has tips for making sure that you have a fast enough shutter speed, the correct focus um, settings, all of those things. My Xire is running. I'm just going to turn that off. And I would probably just add um, a little vignette on this one to darken the edges. Now, if this is, um, you know, an important event, don't worry about the sharpness, right? Sometimes sharpness is overrated. And if it's a little bit blurry, but it's an important moment, just go with it, process it anyways, right? So adding that vignette really made a difference also, right? Uh, let me see, there was another one I was going to edit. Ah, yes, okay. 
Um, this one of Sheila's. Okay, so she said this one is Ecuador, right, Sheila, I believe. And the man on the bike trying to cross the street and it's busy. Um, trying to, I want to emphasize the motorcyclist's dilemma as he tries to cross the intersection and the oblivious pedestrians, including the man with the phone. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, okay, so again, the same things, the same principles that I applied to the, the head sculpture, to the little girl with the balloon also apply here, okay? So we've got a tilt to the image, which I don't mind in street photography. You know, you can get away with the tilt, but if we want to straighten it, we can do that, right? And that looks pretty good. Let's keep the motorcyclist here. So the challenge with trying to bring the focus to the motorcyclist is that there's a lot going on, okay? So remember my upside down trick? Let's look at this image upside down, okay? Where does your eye go? I'm gonna get myself off the screen here. Where does your eye go in this image when you're looking at it, okay? Let me make the background black. Okay, where does your eye go? Actually, I'm okay there. Tell me, what is the first thing you see when you look at this image upside down? For me, I go directly to the sky, okay? So we know that we have to fix that. So keep in mind these things that are grabbing your attention. If that's not where you want the viewer to look, okay, that's what you need to solve, okay? So we may have to do a sky replacement here to solve that problem. Okay, so Deb says the sky, Isla says the sky. Okay, after the sky, where do we go? Where does your eye go? I go to the man with the phone. I'm more inclined to bring focus and make him the subject as opposed to the cyclist, the motorcyclist, because he's all in dark and it's going to be really challenging to make him stand out and be the subject. Okay. So let's take a look at what's sharp here as well. Put that back. And put it right side up. Okay, so now we have some ideas. Um, the cup down here also grabs my attention too. Okay, so instead of trying to bring the attention to this guy, let's look at what's sharp. Okay, the motorcyclist is where the focus is, and the focus is actually right here on this mirror. So again, you really have to be clear on what you're focusing on. If you wanted him to be the subject, you want to focus here, okay? I probably would have focused on this guy. I find him super interesting, right? It's odd because it looks like the focus is here, but then it looks like the focus is back here as well. Um, in what aperture? F9. So my guess is that these people are blurry just because of a little bit of movement, I think. Yeah, 80th of a second. So they're blurry because they were moving. So if you wanted to get them non-blurry, Again, you need a faster shutter speed, okay? So in this case, open the aperture, increase the shutter speed, okay? Let's start with bringing up the shadows a little bit and bringing the highlights down. And we know we're gonna have to solve that sky, okay? But opening up the shadows, that helps, okay? See that? And I'm actually gonna keep brightening it because overall I think it's a little too bright. So when I'm looking at the clipping warnings, I know that the sky is clipping, but I'm not worried about that for now. And let's try color, let's see what it thinks for auto. So it warmed it up a little bit. That's probably a good choice, about like so. Okay, this is one where you can actually try um, more of an artistic preset. So I could try vintage or something like that because street scenes work really well to sort of grunge things up, right? So I'm scrolling through. These are the vintage ones. This one, that one's kind of neat. That one looks like 70s, doesn't it? It's got this green. I go to number seven a lot. I tend to like that one a lot. That one's kind of faded out. Let's try uh, artistic. Pink, too pink. Eh. They're not really grabbing me. I'm more inclined to go to Luminar and add a lot, actually. None of these are grabbing me. 
That one's not bad. It kind of gives a matte look to it. I can do that with curves though. Okay, so if you want to do a matte look with curves, it's really easy. You just go to curves and bring the black up a little bit. See that? There's your matte look. Very simple. Okay, so we can go, we can start with a matte look like this. Okay. I'm inclined to leave it kind of neutral and then see what we can do um, using Luminar with a lot. Okay, so I like this. Let's give them a little bit of texture. So the before image is a little bit underexposed, just a little bit. Okay? And I think what's happening is the camera sees the bright sky and the dark scene, and it's trying to average. Okay. Marty says the cup as well. Yeah, see, the cup does bother me. I mean, we could certainly crop the cup out, right? Or we could use... Um, a tool to clone it or heal. I could do some healing and just lower the opacity like this to darken it. That helps. Let's go all the way to the edge. There, that just minimizes it. Okay, so I'm just using the healing tool, minimized or lowered the opacity a little bit. That minimizes the cup. Okay. Let's do an edge vignette. Again, drawing our eye in. And I could try doing a sky selection here, but let's see what it ends up choosing. The challenge is, yeah, see, it's going to pick, it's, it's picking that tower as well. And, oh, there is some sky there. Look at that. Interesting. There is some sky there. It's just super blown out. Okay, so that's interesting. So we could bring this way down and pick up some detail. Well, uh, let's try dehaze. And I'm going to actually add to it. I'm going to add this object because I want to darken this whole area here. Okay, so I picked up all of this building. Let's add the other one as well. So with the object select in Lightroom, you just have to paint over it and it will kind of select it for you. Oh, I missed a spot. So I'm just gonna brush it in. I'll just use the brush. Right there, I missed a spot and like that, okay. So I just turned on the mask so I could see it. So see what that's doing? That helps. Definitely helps, right? And maybe let's just warm up the sky a little bit too. There we go. Yeah, that dehaze is doing a good job. How's that? much better right so look at the cup cups toned down skies toned down our eyes come more to the center but we're still all over the place because there's a lot of stuff that's bright so let's just see what happens if i do select subject right i want to know what lightroom thinks is the subject here okay so it thinks it's all of these people right my other option is i could do select people and see which people it finds, and then just pick him. Okay, so it's finding that person over on the left, the lady in the white jacket, there's that guy, that's the guy that I want. I want the whole person. And I'm just going to brighten him. Keep the shadows, because if I lift them too much, he's going to look like he's cut out, right? Like so. Now that I've got him selected, I'm going to do a duplicate and invert. So everything else, I'm going to bring the highlights down just a bit. Okay. See how he pops? Look at that. Okay. So I've really made him stand out. As I said, I think I'm going to have a really hard time making the motorcyclist be the subject because he's super dark. But now we have focus on this guy. Okay. 
titles are really important too. You know, if you call this one, um, you know, don't text and walk or something like that, right? Like a common problem <laughs> lots of people have. I'm going to take this one to directly to Luminar because I want to apply a lot. I can apply a lot in, in Photoshop, but honestly, um, it's easier in Luminar because it gives us a preview, whereas um, Photoshop does not. And we can also take a look at a sky replacement here if we feel the need. Or we could use the new um, Twilight tool, actually. We could see how that one works. Because the Twilight is going to affect the sky. Let's try. Let's do let's do golden, that preset that was really warm. And let's see what happens. It takes a minute to analyze. See how it says analyzing twilight enhancer at the at the bottom where it says applying. Okay, so now we know it's still working because it's got that little spinny wheel, right? And then all of a sudden it should go color. Right, like that. Okay, so obviously he's being really selected, but we have the scene, remember? So Relight Human is not on right now. So if I drag this up, see how it's applying more to him as well, right? But look at the sky. Look at the sky, it's amazing. Okay, so let's just say I want, I like this color, but let's just minimize it a little bit. And I love what it's doing up on the top of the image, but not so much down on the bottom, right? So we could really, okay, where where's the sky? Okay, let's move that down a little bit. It thinks the sky is all of this. So it's affecting the building as well. Okay, so if I remove it from global, so global means it's applying to things that might be in the middle of the sky more so versus less so if i go this way it's less on the buildings okay that actually looks pretty good oh that's better too we can brighten the shade up maybe a little bit less saturation and let's see what it's doing look at that now we have a sunset, right? Maybe I want, instead, uh, we want to change. And if I change these presets, all it's really going to do is change the color. So I could just go and do that myself, right? So if I'd rather have blue, we can have blue, right? There's blue and pink. We haven't played with the dawn as well, okay? So this one here and the temperature of the dawn. Definitely want it warm, right? Oh, I like that. So let's go with that, okay? So we didn't need to do a sky replacement after all. So originally the sky was really blown out and now we don't have to do a sky replacement. I came to do a lot, so let's do that. That's under the mood tool. I like to increase the amount quite high. And then when you go in to see the presets, um, let's go, oh, there's retro vibe. Let's see what that does, right? So these are some presets that, or some LUTs that I've got downloaded. I've got quite a few. These are kind of neat, you know? Again, it does look sort of 70s-ish. You can see what it's doing. Let's take it up a little higher even. There's also some really nice, um, let's try. This is one of my favorites. I love Wooden, Ushuaia, and Smoky. Those are sort of my favorites, as well as Sepia. So Sepia gives us a complete Sepia tone. However, we could just dial it down for a, a sort of more subtle effect. Okay. That's actually doing a nice job minimizing a lot of these colors and gives it more of that old world kind of feel. So I like one that has this kind of brown tone, right? So having an idea of what you want to do with your image is a good idea, but sometimes you can just play with these lots and presets and, and see what it suggests. I need to increase this. 
let's see, artistic, rough sepia, simple film, smoked. That's adding some contrast and darkness that I don't want. Where did I find that one? And you can end up with so many of these things that it's literally just impossible to find one. So you can start finding your favorites and just make note, right? Plum tart. <laughs> no. I definitely, oh, I do like the green. I do like the green. It's darkening, but it's kind of doing a neat, a neat thing here. We're losing our sky though. All right, I'm just going to pick one. I should have a nice, oh, here we go, sepia tones. Ooh, that one is very old world. Okay, so that's kind of giving us a mat. I'm gonna go with this one. I'm gonna go with this one and I'm gonna actually mask it off the sky because I want to keep that color in the sky. So I'm going to use mask AI. I could have used object select and selected the sky and I'm just going to select the sky and then invert it. Okay. So it's basically applying everywhere except the sky. I think it missed his shirt. miss that bit there we go see it thinks this building is part of the sky that's the full version okay so there is our before and after from luminar it's gone a little bit dark, so I could come back in here and brighten him up a little bit more. We could try Portrait Boca and so on, but I'm just going to brighten him. I'm just going to brighten it overall a tiny bit. Now we have a really cool faded out. This is the kind of look I really like for street photography. It is easy to get lost in the world of LUTs. <laughs> and there's so many of them, right? And I've gotten downloads from, I don't even know where, you know, I've got some from Luminar X membership and uh, somebody gave me some. I think I have some of Pete's and, you know. So yeah, it's easy to get lost in that world for sure. All right, let's have a look at that one. Uh, Rob says there's a poll asking if you all know that we are switching to Wednesday night. So if you could answer the poll that should be popping up for you in the chat, um, make sure that you make note that um, April 28th will be our last Sunday for the season. And then we are going to switch to Wednesdays uh, again for the spring and summer into late fall. And that will be at 4 p.m. Eastern time. So starting on May... What day did I say? 22nd. Okay, so April 28th is our last one. And then we're away for a little while. And then we'll be back on May 22nd. Okay, so what do you guys think of that edit? That was a cool image, Sheila. Um, I love the I love the South American culture and the and the markets. So many great things, right? It looks like a market street. Like this could have been Granada and Nicaragua. This could have been uh, downtown Lima. This could have been Cusco. Like it, this is any you know Latin American country market street market. I love it. Yeah, cool, fun image, Sheila. Thanks for sending that one in. That was a fun one to process. Uh, let's do another Luminar. Let me see. I think we're just going to do one more today. Um, let's see about... I've got this one of Thomas's a while ago. Let's see which one you guys want me to edit here. 
Um, Mike is here. So we could do Mike's. Which four, which one of those four do you guys want? It's a, the time is, no, Rob, it's not 8 p.m. Eastern. Oh, yeah, it would be 8 p.m. Sorry, 8 p.m. Eastern. Yes, my bad. Sorry, my bad. Currently, it's 4 p.m. Eastern, and we're moving to 8 p.m. Eastern. Yes. So which of these four would you like to see the top left, which is the Metropolitan, it looks like, the subway in, looks like Montreal, actually, um, or the bar or one of the street scenes from Mike. Okay, Isla wants to see humans aren't real. Rob says we might be having surprise pop-up live streams. <laughs> he wants me to do one. He wants me to do one at 2 a.m. our time, which would be, you know, you, more European time. So morning for you guys, like mid-morning, late morning. Andrew wants the bar. <laughs> you have a conflict of interest. That's okay, Mike. I mean, you could pick one of yours. That's fine if you want me to do one. Somebody already said the human one, so Eilis is that or the bar. So which one would you prefer? Mike, let's hear. Vivian says top left. So of the street scenes, Stephanie says the bar. So the bar seems to be getting some views, some votes. Marguerite likes humans aren't real. Let's do the alien. Let's do the alien. Okay, because out of the street scenes, honestly, that's the one to me that is the most interesting street scene. Okay, there's, there's a clear subject for me here. And you're Luminar. So I'm going to go over to Luminar, and there it is. Let's just go straight into edit. Okay. So with street stuff, um, if we want to go try a preset first, okay, of course, it's going to give us some suggestions of collections. So urban style is one that comes up. And let's just see if any of these look good. Okay. So Old Town, Edinburgh. That was actually kind of neat. Toronto. Ooh, I like that one because it brings out the blue, right? So it makes it feel cold. Melbourne, Melbourne, Abbey Street, New York. So I think New York looks great and Toronto looks great. Maybe even New York. New York makes the uh, wood look more orange and the bag stand out. Toronto's not as, ten as intense. It looks cooler, okay? So we could decide either of those. I'm going to go with this one because I feel like making the wood um, more brown makes the blue stand out more. And we can adjust that, right? So we can adjust the color if we want to. But that just makes it a little more punchy. Okay. Now I'm going to do a crop and I'm going to try and correct the tilt again. So let's just do horizon correction. Yep. And I'm going to go off axis here in aspect ratio because I want to come in a little bit behind her so that we kind of, oops, why is that not working? There we go. I want to come in a little bit behind her so that I'm not having just that sliver of something on the edge. So I'm always conscious of the edges. And there's a lot of stuff in the foreground that I don't think is necessarily needed. Let's show a little bit of that snow maybe, or we could just come right up here. Okay, so getting rid of all this stuff in the foreground will make her or the person walking, I can't tell if it's her, um, I think it's a lady, it will feel like she's closer, okay? Again, watching the edges, I'm going to come down a little bit from the top just to get rid of some of the busyness there. And I'm just going to check to see if it got things straight. I'm looking at the edge of the door here more than anything, okay? Like that. We could also try transform, which is inside the develop tool, okay? And we have develop raw, but because I applied a preset, okay, all of the edits came on top. So if we want to go back to develop raw, that's where we will find transform, okay? We can try vertical correction. Did it do anything? Oh, 
like so. And then when I come back up to the top, it will apply all the tools again. Okay. But if you want to edit anything that was in the preset, okay, all of those things are here. Okay, so it's doing face AI. And in this case, it hasn't detected the face. It doesn't recognize that this is a person. Okay, so we can actually just delete this one. We can see what it's doing with Enhance AI. Oh, that's working. We can see what it's doing with color. Now, it looks like it's not doing anything. Maybe it's not. So we can actually shift the blue a little bit if we want. Okay, so if I want the blue to be more this color, or if I want the orange to be more orange and less red, we can shift it, right? Likewise, this bag here, I can shift more orange as opposed to pink. Let's see what color harmony is doing. Now, color contrast is only being used a small amount here. So we can actually increase this. And let's say I want to put it over here instead. So this is going to brighten the blue and minimize the orange. Okay, so now we're minimizing the person, bringing out the sign more. So we really get to decide which thing we're emphasizing when we're doing the editing. Okay? Now this is bugging me over here. Okay, it's applying details to add a little bit of sharpness. We could apply even more. Like so super contrast. This is another great tool that sort of can add mid-tone contrast. Look at that. That's actually doing a really nice job. Okay, this one looks like it's been turned down. Sometimes things will be in a preset with the, the amount turned down, and then you can go and add to it, okay? Or dial it down if you want. Aha, that's why it's called New York. It's got a New York LUT applied. I think I'm going to dial that one down a little bit, actually. And it's got some toning applied as well. So it's got some orange on the highlights. And it's got some blue on the shadows. So that's actually kind of cool. The only other thing I would add to this one would be the edge vignette, right? Now, because I've cropped it, um, I'm going to need to bring in the amount because the it doesn't do post-crop vignette yet. I'm still waiting. <laughs> I'm still waiting for it. I'm going to keep it a little bit rounder and then move it off center. So we keep our focus here and darken this edge of the picture. Okay. So I dial the feather down to zero and then adjust the amount. There we go. See how that minimizes this problem over here. That looks good. So there's our before. And after. Okay, so it did correct that <coughs> vertical tilt a little bit. Anything else? Do we want to look at this one upside down just to see? I mean, I think the story is here with the with the alien and the sign, right? Our eye definitely goes to the alien and then it goes to the person and the signs and the graffiti and the stuff on the wall there. So your eye plays between the person and, and the alien in the sign. And I think it's a fun image in terms of the humor, right? It almost looks like he's crying. <laughs> right? It looks like it looks like the alien is crying and the this little, I don't know, is it a duck has an umbrella over here? Uh, Mike says he cropped his um, edit as well. See you, Holly. Uh, let's see. Well, Rob has an idea. Uh, you cropped your edit as well. Was it similar crop like this? Did you remove some from the edges? See how just simplifying the edges really brings the eye in a lot more? And I think that's our last image for today. But before I wrap up, 
Um, I want to remind you what's coming next week. Uh, let's see. Uh, we have... Finally, we have pets because I had to delay this one because we had it scheduled for Easter Sunday. So next week we'll be doing pets. And uh, I haven't picked a, um, a theme for the following week, Rob. Do we want to do, what do we want to do for the following week? Um, we haven't done travel, but I mean, that would be kind of appropriate uh, as people are, are coming up on travel. Ah, you did more of a more of a four by five crop. Okay. Still made it look like the tears were real. Yeah, yeah. Tears are real, humans are not. <laughs> exactly. What should we do the following week? Any suggestions? So we have pets next week. Any suggestions for the following week? I'm just gonna close my Photoshop. May the 4th be with you, Rob says. So there's there's Cinco de Mayo. We could have some sort of a um, Spanish or uh, Latino theme. Um, I already just said Cinco de Mayo. May the 4th be with you, like Star Wars. Um, we could have aliens. <laughs> we, we could have aliens as a theme. Uh, we just did that one. This one's kind of an alien head too, isn't it? Looks like an alien. Sometimes we joke that our cats look like aliens. We think they're aliens. Um, water, we could do water. Uh, let me see what I've got for water. Um, I still got a few left, but we could do water. Yeah. So um, streams, lakes, oceans. A couple of people are saying travel. Um, what about the Cinco de Mayo theme? Anything Mexican? Um, Latino, could be maracas, could be colors, travel. Okay, so it seems like the vote is travel. I will come up with something and we will be doing travel then. Okay, uh, but before I leave here, um, I just wanted to kind of talk about street photography a little bit more and in terms of um, like storytelling, okay? Like what is, what is street photography? What is storytelling? Um, I actually did a slideshow of this, so maybe I can even just play the slideshow for you guys. So, where's my thing here? I don't know if there's any music on here. There is, but I'm just going to remove it. There we go. Okay, so let's just go and play this. Let me see if it'll play on this screen. I'll talk while the slides are playing. I'm not sure how long it's going to play for, but these are just some of my street photography images. Um, I teach a street photography class as well, and I often do that with um, camera clubs, and we'll do photo walks and things locally. So if you are lucky enough to be in a, in a city where you can do... Um, oops. Okay, it's playing on the wrong monitor. <laughs> Let me get out of that. Uh, let's just preview it here. Hang on, I might have to do it this way. Let's start at the beginning and let's just play it here. Let's try this again. It started playing on my other screen. If you are lucky enough to be in a city, um, you know, where you can do this kind of photography, oh, we'll have to deal with it this way. Why doesn't it want me to? There we go. Let's try that again. Let's see if I can get these off here. So I'm trying to make the image bigger for you. <laughs> there we go. So if you live in a city, um, if there's a camera club or a street photography group near you, get out and, and try some street photography. It can be intimidating, but like I said, look for the story, okay? So street photography, where's the story there with a the guy under the car, right? 
it's all about what do you see, right? Use your powers of observation. Look for unique things that are, that are going by. Um, one of my favorite exercises to give people is to stand on the street corner or sit at a cafe or something for 30 minutes and just pay attention to the light, to the subject matter, what's going by you. You know, here's a guy on a motorcycle with a cake, right? Um, Street photography is all about paying attention to moments. Look for moments. Again, parades, festivals are a great time to get out and do street photography if that's something that intimidates you a little bit. Going out with a photo walk or a camera club can also be helpful because then you're not going by yourself, right? And in some places, it's it's literally not safe to do street photography. Um, like when we were in Colombia, for example, and in some places in Nicaragua, I wouldn't go out by myself with my camera, right? Um, and definitely not at night. So power and numbers, safety and numbers. Um, I've been out and about in, in New York by myself with cameras a lot. But you still have to be conscious of the fact that in many places, you know, if you're walking around with a big camera, you're going to be a target. And that's one of the reasons I like this camera, which is the Fuji X100. Um, and I talked about that in a recent newsletter with the new Fuji X100 6 that came out. It's really small. You can see it in that picture. <laughs> it's really small and not intimidating for people you're pointing the camera at as well. Um, it doesn't make you look like a professional with a big camera and a big lens, and you're not as much of a target either, right? So even though the camera may be, you know, $1,500, $2,000 or whoever is photographing with a Leica, you know, unless the thieves know what a Leica is worth or what a Fuji is worth, okay, um, you'll be less of a target and your subject feels like less of a target. Okay, so think about moments, right? Guys on the street doing construction through the windows, um, school kids, people. Again, you'll see that most of my street photography includes people. Of course, that one doesn't, <laughs> right? So, so what do you like about street photography? Like uh, for me, it's a lot of fun. Tell me in the chat as we're about ready to sign out here. I'm not sure how many slides are left in my slideshow here. But tell me what you like about street photography. Looks like I'm on random, so I'm not sure when the slideshow is going to end. Uh, yeah, Mike says, says San Francisco is really bad right now for camera theft. I, I think San Francisco is is um, probably one of the most dangerous cities right now. Yeah, it's just not good. Uh, Mike says, did anybody get a solar eclipse photo this past Monday? You got to experience totality. Cool. Share that in um, in our Facebook group, Mike. Are you in the Facebook group? Architecture. Isla likes architecture. Cool. Uh, yes, Rob was redoing our website over the next six months, so you'll see some changes happening. Cats are messing around in my office again. <laughs> They're out in the living room. So I'm going to... Um, you're not on Facebook. Okay. Oh, I have a solution for that coming up soon, Mike. Stay tuned. Um, we're actually working on something that uh, those of you that are still here watching, I'll give you a little heads up. Um, something that we're going to be launching after we get back from our Alaska trip is that we're going to be providing a space that is unique for photographers to come and hang out that is not on Facebook. So stay tuned for that, Mike. That's something that I think that you're going to enjoy. So keep watching the slideshow. Um, I'm going to sign out. <laughs> and uh, we've got lots of things to, to work on this week. Pets next week. I'll send you a reminder to send in your pet images. Oh, I think it's finished. Send in your pet images, please. And also the following week of travel. So travel means any place in the world goes. And the fact that street photography is always changing. Yeah, exactly. You can go to the same street a week later and have completely, you know, something different, right? Vivian loves the surprise element. Yeah, same. Marguerite likes tra tractor parades and car shows. Oh, cool. 
Thanks so much, Catherine. Um, thanks for joining. <laughs> and we will enjoy. Thanks so much. Rob says, smash that like button before you go. So please give us a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to the channel and share this video, especially if I did your image. Show everybody what was possible in photo editing and share this video on your socials or email with, to your friends, text them, whatever you like. Share, share, share. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you next week for Pets.